So, I was doing some work on my nice new Amiga A600 the other day, and I discovered that some of the keys on the keyboard didn't work, which isn't great. I have fired up KRF's diagnostic tool, which lets you test the keyboard, and you can see that the keys all respond, except for help. Well, now it works, of course, but it's kind of dubious. Yeah, it's only f firing occasionally. Control, is that going to come back to life now that it's on camera? No, it's not. The two Amiga keys, and having Control and the Amiga keys not work is kind of important because you have to press Control, Amiga, Amiga to reboot it. And the down cursor key. The other cursor keys work, just not down. Obviously, the keypad doesn't work because it's missing. So, I am going to take the lid off this thing and open up the keyboard and see what is going on. And while I'm at it, I am going to try and open up the mouse because uh, some of the contacts there need to go to clean as well. The right mouse button is kind of dubious. So I've already had the screws removed, or to be more accurately, I didn't put them back in again the last time I did any work on this. So we unplug the LEDs, and then we unplug the keyboard connector. If I can get the latch open, like so. So the computer itself goes safely away. The keyboard itself unclips. These two clips here get pushed aside and then the thing just lifts slightly clumsily out. It's... There we go. So the daughter board with the LEDs on it stays on the case. And here is the keyboard with lots of little screws. So let me find an appropriate screwdriver. And let's start removing these. That was a lot of screws. But anyway, the back plate comes off revealing the membrane. So what I suspect has happened is, um, see the help key is here. Uh, so what I suspect has happened is that the membrane is dirty. So when you push the keys, the plunger slides up and makes contact between two copper pads, yeah and there's a lot of fluff inside the membrane. So what I'm going to do is to just clean this off with some IPA and see if that helps. Yes, the amount of green that came off is a little dubious. Uh, that's probably resist. Yeah, it would be these green things here. Um, I hope that's not important. Let's get the fluff clear. Okay, so we power it on and it should boot. Okay, test keyboard with F2. Looks better. How about control? No. The two Amiga keys seem to work. Down. 
No. Okay, pushing hard makes that work. But not the down key. Right, this. That's actually that's slowly getting better. But it's still not good enough. Okay. And the down cursor key doesn't work at all. So let's investigate the down cursor key. Okay, so down cursor key is here, and this is the plunger for it. Does the plunger actually come out? That would be nice. I'm not sure. If you remove the key cap, which actually, rather than just wrenching it off, I own a proper key cap puller. So yes, okay, so this will push down like this. So we get the meter out and we can do some continuity testing. Okay, if I can figure out where one of the lines goes to, this one I think. Okay, the tracks don't seem to be particularly dead. What about the plunger itself? Is it still making electrical contact? Doesn't look like it. What do we get for an actual resistance? So, Hundred ohms. What about a representative other plunger? Hundred ohms. So it seems like it should work. Um, I need multiple fingers to actually test this. Well, the other thing I need to do is to check for continuity to the end of the ribbon because these are kind of prone to cracking. A crack in the track will cause uh, various things not to work. I would expect other keys to be failing if that were the case. So, and it's the second from the right, so that's this one. Can I get all of this on camera? I suspect I probably can't. Hmm, it is indeed second from the right. It's almost working. Let's try looking at the resistance. Get that on camera again. 
So 60 odd ohms just from here to there, which is not brilliant. But let's double check by looking at one of the other lines. That goes to here, and that goes to here. Three hundred ohms, okay. So that does all seem reasonably reasonable. Okay, so here we have just the membrane plugged into the computer. So first thing you want to do is press F2 to get to the keyboard diagnostic. So hopefully I should just be able to close these two contacts with the plunger. Okay, this is the plunger from the down arrow key, so I know that works. So this is registering. Not very reliably, but that's fine. Our right arrow. Hmm, there's quite a lot of fluff in here, actually. That's not going to help. There. Okay. Well, the back of the membrane is non-conductive, by the way. Okay, so let's try up. No. L. Semicolon. Okay, up. No. Out. Interesting. Okay, let's try one of these. So we touch the contacts to the two pads and the key registers. So let's try our down. And we get nothing. That works. Oh, down did actually register there. There we go. So, I am uncertain what to do here other than to order a new uh, membrane. So this seems to be working absolutely fine, but not with the plunger. See, this is triggering fine. Shift is not. Down arrow is not. Okay, now back on the continuity tester, I've discovered that if I touch one of these pads and then scan along here, that one, that is making good enough connection that the meter can detect it. And let's actually check the resistance for that one. Now I need to find, remember which pad it is. Uh, here we go, this one, 35 ohms, which suggests that what we were seeing earlier at 100 ohms is wrong. So let's find, uh, let's actually find the control key that's this one, because we know this one is sort of sometimes working, or at least it was. So these are chained together. I think to here, yep. And then it ends up at the right hand one of these pins. So it should be the here. Come on, need more fingers. Right, and that's doing nothing. So let's just double check that. T 
year. So that is making contact. So let's try here to here. That would be nothing. Okay. So is there a break somewhere along here? Well, there's a crease in the cable here. But that's been there since forever. So this is the other side of the board where you can see the tracks rather more clearly. The tracks are printed on this side and then this green solder resist is glued on. So if I get a reasonably sharp thing, you can expose a little bit of track. Okay, that works. Let's try here. That does not work. I don't want to scrape too much, but, or else I will cut the track itself. There's nothing there. I hope I haven't actually damaged the track there. I think there's actually a possibility I have, so let's do this a little bit more carefully. Okay. Yeah, I have. I cut the track. Let's check from here to here. also doesn't work. I still think that this is this track is damaged. It's certainly damaged now, so I'm going to have to try and bodge around it. I'm hoping that this mylar will take solder. But we're still not getting a connection from here to here, which does make me think that there's something wrong with this ribbon. I don't spot any thing. Oh, that's interesting. The finger here that goes into the socket is making very poor contact. Let's try one of the other fingers. See, that's working all the way through. But this one is not. So, yes, I think that this part of the membrane is defunct.
Right, well, unfortunately, I don't think I can bodge around that. So it's going to be new membrane time. Which was a shame, as I had stuff I actually wanted to do with this Amiga. That's why I had it out. I suspect that... Well, I know I've damaged the track around here, but... Um, I suspect that the other stuff I was doing has probably wrecked it as well. Well, that is annoying. Anyway, the membrane was clearly defunct to begin with. But uh, it was just not defunct enough that I could get stuff done on it, so... Yeah. Okay, I'm going to have to order a new membrane and come back. So here is the new membrane. This came from RWAP Software in the UK. It is brand new, not new old stock. Uh, membranes are still in production these days for, you know, everything, like most keyboards use them. If you compare it to the old one, the new one it has thicker, looks more robust. It's got a matte texture to it rather than a smooth, shiny texture. It did arrive with this crease here, which is a little bit concerning, but hopefully it's okay. Uh, but the only thing to do now is to install it and see if it works. As I now know from hacking about with this, these things are way more fragile than they look. Hopefully this one is more robust, but I am going to be much more careful with it than I was of the old one. So after taking all the screws out again, we open up the keyboard and then the membrane should just drop in like this. And that should be all there is to it. I have noticed one interesting thing, which is that... Uh, that's not a good way to show it. Over here, this is the pads for the return key. Uh, this membrane has got two sets of pads in parallel, as far as I can tell. While the old membrane only has one set of pads. I think this is because this is for a ISO layout of keyboard with the tall return key, while this is a universal membrane which should work on anything. So it's got the two sets of pads for uh, the two positions the return key can be in. And now I look at it, these two are in parallel but these two are not, so possibly this is for a different key in a different keyboard layout, but it's a universal uh, membrane. There are apparently two types of membrane for the Atari 600, green ones and blue ones. So I had to order a green one to match my old green one. So, now we put the lid on, and do up all the screws. I will spare you that. Okay, so here we are, all wired up to the video capture and ready to plug in. I've got KRF's uh, disk tools in the drive. So all I need to do is to plug this into the connector here, like so. Push down the clamps. That doesn't look like it's gone all the way in. It has not. Let's try that again. So you lift it up to release the clamp. Push it in. There we go. It goes all the way down. Then the clamp goes down. This is much firmer than the old one was. Like so. And that's good and tightly connected. Right. So, moment of truth. We boot it. to get at the keyboard tester. Okay, keyboard, F2. Uh. 
That's not good. Caps lock light is not lighting either. Now, what is wrong? Let's try reseating this. to lift the clamp, which is tricky. <laughs> uh, yes, because the new connector is thicker, the new cable is thicker than the old one, the clamp has locked in place rather. Uh, this is going to need more work than I can really do on camera. Be back in a moment. Well, I have discovered something interesting. So if I test continuity between this pad and this pad up here, let's see if I can get that on camera, it works. If I try and test continuity between this pad which is then connected to here, I get nothing. But if I connect it to here, it works. This track is broken, and I bet it's happening there. Fantastic! I have managed to replace my old broken membrane with a new broken membrane. Uh, so here is the crease from this side and I can't actually make anything out on the the little camera screen and let's have a look at this side uh, hang on that's the it's this side that I think is broken so just get a good view of that and I, in editing, I will let you know via subtitles if I saw anything. So, this sucks. I'll have to get back to the vendor to see what they have to say about this. It might be repairable. I need to get some conductive silver paint for that, I suppose. But... Honestly, uh, given that I paid, I think, 25 to 30 quid for this, I think I'd rather get a replacement. So, we're going to break here for another couple of weeks and see how that goes. Well, it is several weeks later and I have a replacement keyboard membrane. I can't fault the supplier's customer service who just sent this to me, no questions asked. So let's see what it looks like. So we open it. And here is a membrane. How does it look? It doesn't seem to have any creases. The Contacts here look kind of peculiar. The ones down the end are a different colour. Let's find the meter from wherever I put it. So let's just check this contact to here. Yep, that works. Uh, let's check this one goes all the way around to here so it should be this one and this here yeah. yes uh,
Right, I think that's just covered with something. So now I've scraped it a little. Let's try that again. There and... Okay, that's better. Well, it's not an exhaustive test, but it's better than the other membrane. So... Let me install that. And then we'll hook it all up. And... See how it goes. According to my camera, it takes over six minutes to do up all these screws. So now, I suppose the only thing to do is to plug this into the Amiga motherboard, get out the composite video recording hardware, and see whether it works. Okay, moment of truth time. It's all hooked up. I notice that the cable tail here is longer than on the original, so I'll have to be careful not to crease it when I put the case on. Let's apply some power. Well, that light went on, which is a good start. So it boots. Okay, here we are with the test kit. Test keyboard. Right. This is looking good so far. Yep, that is... Okay. You see the light is toggling correctly. Even the blank key seems to be working. I'm just going to move that up a bit. Bottom row. Yeah, that's just me pressing the. Uh, pressing two keys at once. Yep. The down cursor key is looking good. Out, Amiga, space. Amiga out. Fantastic. I do believe that I have a properly working keyboard. Right, let's try the actual control Amiga Amiga thing which wasn't working previously and see what happens. It boots. Well, it rebooted. So I take the disk out and we should get Workbench. Brilliant. And I forgot to plug the mouse in, so I can't actually do anything with it. But this does seem to indicate that the new keyboard is working fine, which is fantastic. Finally, the long nightmare is over. So I can put the lid back on this thing, do the screws up, um, and have a fully working Amiga. Now, there is one more thing that I was going to do which is to uh, repair and clean the mouse. This is mostly fine, except the right mouse button is unreliable, and as the Amiga uses that a lot, I need to try and fix it somehow. When I got this thing, this was disgustingly filthy, and I have attempted to clean it. The mouse ball is still rather brown. So I'm gonna to have to figure out a way to get this open. Now, I have identified where the screws are, which is under this label. And as it's quite a nice label, I wonder if I can actually just peel it off. Uh, you know what? I'm going to use the hot air gun for this. That will help get the label off. 
Okay, it's set to 100, which is the lowest it will go. So we toast the label a bit and does it want to peel off? On the whole, no. Okay, and with luck, the adhesive on the label will continue to work. Okay, undo the screws. Apparently there are some fragile plastic clips at the front, so there we go, that wasn't so bad. So the two buttons push, you can just see these moving, these two prongs which go down onto these two rather cheap and nasty castanets switches. So I believe that these will want switch cleaner. They're not as clicky as they really should be. They'd be easy to replace, but they would need to be replaced with ones that were of very precise height. And I do not believe I've got any. Plus they do work, so I don't want to fiddle with it too much. Hang on, let's take the board out. Can I take the board out? I'd have to undo these screws that would remove the this black plastic piece. Now another thing that needs cleaning are the rollers. You can normally do this from the inside, but... Uh, they're covered in fluff. Heaven knows what this stuff is. It's probably really repulsive. So you can just the rollers themselves actually seem to be reasonably clean. They do get covered up with gunk, and it's usually a cement-like substance made out of dust glued together with sweat. Mice are not very nice on the inside. That's one of the reasons why optical mice took off so much. They're just cleaner. Okay, contact cleaner. So, won't need much. And hopefully that should permeate inside the switches. generally make things better. So, uh, one last remaining thing to do, which is to just give the, trying to open a packet of baby wipes. There we go. The last thing to do is to give the Outside a quick clean with some moist baby wipes.
These aren't quite the best things I know for getting general dirt off. The best things are stain remover wipes, which I've only ever seen in the UK. I haven't been able to source them here, but these are okay. Okay, and the ball wants a clean. I will avoid any of the obvious jokes. Honestly, they kind of write themselves. And then reassemble. Okay, so cable loops around here and goes out through the strain relief. Make sure it's pressed down into the gap. Oh, where is that clip? There is the clip. No, it's not. Ah, that's the clip, this piece here. It hooks in there. So that wants to go on like this. And then we do the screws up. Ball drops into the hole. Wheel goes on, clips in place, and let's just give this a squirt with contact cleaner since we have it out. Okay. So let's get the newly repaired Amiga out, plug the mouse in and see how things go. And we boot. And light's not on. Why is that light not on? I did plug the cable in. But it's suddenly booting. Right mouse button is working, I can get at the menus. Yeah, um, this is a little awkward for me to use because I have a slightly different video set up, which means I'm seeing everything through about a second of lag, which is really annoying but it does seem to be working input. Come on. So. Yeah, it looks okay to me. button gone. Plus I can't see the corners of the screen. Okay, I believe that this is now working. I'm not going to play with it now because this is just terrible to deal with. Um, do want to know why these lights haven't lit up? But I, that's a minor issue. It's probably just a matter of me not plugging the thing in or something like that. So I won't bother doing that on camera. I am pleased to report that the keyboard now does seem to work. Where did I put my shell? Here it is. That looks like an alphabet to me. The cursor keys do seem to work. Up and down. Well, they did do something. Excellent. So I'm going to call it here. In real life terms, this particular video has probably taken about two months to make. And I'm very glad to have a working Amiga again. There's a number of things I actually want to do with this, including more videos. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this 
I forgot to put the sticker back on. Where did it go? Uh, it's somewhere here. Well, I can't find the sticker, but I did take the opportunity to plug the LED strip in, and yes, they do indeed work. I'm sure the sticker will show up at some point. Uh, apart from anything else, I'll see what happened to it when I review the video. I'm not going to bother doing it now. So, I have an Amiga that works, again. Hopefully this time it will stay working for a while. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know what you think in the comments.